teach you something in the word of God this morning. Uh, I need your spirits to be open to receive from the Lord uh, this powerful word of God. It's in the book of Genesis and it's the 27th chapter. We'll be between the 27th and the 28th chapter. Uh, this is a familiar scripture, a familiar situation where we've studied in the Word of God. But we're going to look at it very different this morning. Um, I'm excited about this Word. You have your Bibles, you got them out, I know you got them on your cell phone, and you got your tablets and all that good stuff. I mean, I'm old fashioned, I just like punts and people. Amen. Write a note to get to keep it. I was sitting here and I looked out over the audience and there was Corisa and Chris. And then I looked up at John Me and then I looked at me and then Pastor Sandra. I thought about my mom. I've been blessed to be in the midst of five generations. Amen. Now some of y'all take that light and give that ain't light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My mom is still living and she gets to see her great, great grandchild. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing. Somebody don't get it after a while. That's a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. So I, I'm grateful to the Lord for his kindness toward me. That he allowed me to yet be alive. To enjoy good health. To enjoy the goodness of the land. Can nobody do this then, Jesus? Oh, give God some glory in this moment. The Bible says, this obedient child won't live out half of their days. I thank God that I'm past that and even greater so. I don't consider myself having been a disobedient child. You know, we all have our little areas that we need to tend to. Uh, I remember when I was a child, uh, I was the oldest of my siblings alive because there were two ahead of me. But I used to take glory whoopings. Uh, she ain't gonna tell you all that now. I used to take her whoopings so before that daddy would beat her uh, blue, he would get me because I would always say, I did it. When I didn't do it, I did it. Because I didn't want to see Glory get a hook. You know, she owed me, she owed me, she owed me. She owed me. I hope she cooked none for me today. She owed me. <laughs> God just good like that. 27th chapter of the book of Genesis. This is such a profound message and we're going to do quite a bit of reading so those of you that don't adjust to reading too good you read with me that'll keep you woke because sometimes when you read in scriptures if you're not careful people go to sleep you never have a problem with insomnia take out your bible cut enough light on to see half of the words because you get ready to go to sleep but if you spend time with God, you won't have a sleep spirit, but you'll have a warring spirit. Lift your hands and receive the spirit of warring. Because we're definitely in a battle. And we win if we fight. If we don't fight, you lose. Amen? Amen. All right, we, we're going to give you a little uh, preemptive of this story. It's about Rebecca overhearing Jacob tell Esau to go kill me some venison and bring it back and feed it to me and I'm going to lay my hands on you and bless you. History records that down through the lineage of time that the father laid hands on the firstborn yes. and the firstborn always received the blessing. Yes. So the word was spoken over the firstborn. But if you check through scripture, 
you're going to find that that's not necessarily true all through scripture. Even when uh, Jacob got ready to lay his hands on um, Joseph's son, he did lay his hands on the second bone and not the first. So we didn't come to have a resolving situation if you first or second or third or fourth. We just came to anoint you in the name of Jesus. Knowing that that anointing will protect you, shield you, and take you to that place of manifestation. We have history to show that when the man of God went to anoint a king out of Jesse's house, that all the sons were brought before him, he thought, and they were all the older sons. And when he got through passing through them, and the Lord said, no, not him, no, not him, no, not him. And he said, are they any more? And, and, and just to say, yeah, old David is out there in the field. And so David seemed not to have been important to Jesse to be anointed, but David was very much important to God. For he had a spirit like God. He was as God was when it came to resolving in his uh, submission to the authority of God. So we didn't come to select and choose this morning. We came to lay hands because we just know that everything I set my hand to this morning, God going to bless it, amplify it, and use it for his glory. Hallelujah. And we find that when God laid his hands on David, he did not walk into the kingship. What he did do is walk into his position to be saved and kept until he reached the ultimate a position that God had ordained him for. I believe that when I lay my hands on you, some things going to open up to some of you. Some of you going to make some changes. Where you thought you were headed, you're going to find that you got to go a different route. Some of you that thought that you were not doing that well in school, going to do better in school after I lay my hands on you. Because God got a place for you, and that place he's taking you to, he's getting ready to sustain you, that you may reach it in fullness, and the fullness of his manifestation. I believe that some of you, you're going to get a fight in you. For you normally just let things go. I believe that there's going to be a fight in you to the point that you're going to fast and pray and come against anything that come against you. For you normally would not react. But after today, I feel that you're going to do some great reaction. Amen. Amen. Kayla came to inform me this morning that she has been accepted in the program to go to Germany. Amen. 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 See, what I'm seeing is the people of God that get in a place to hear from God, they get, they're, they're receiving the fullness of the benefit of God. And, and, and if we really understand trusting God, we'll see things happen that if anybody would have told us it was going to happen, we would have called them a liar. I don't know about you, but I have things that nobody could have told me 20 years ago I would have. I, I live a place in my life. I'm not talking about structure, but I'm talking about life as a whole. I live a place that nobody could have told me I would ever arrive here. I did not see this coming, but God had it made up for me all the time. Lift your hands and say, God, don't let me miss you. So here we find that uh, at this time, <laughs> Esau was up in age. And so what Jacob wanted to do was to bless him before he died. And he, he, he knew, Jacob knew, that death was getting close. But he wanted to bless Esau. And Rebecca overheard the conversation. And she had had these two boys and she favored Jacob over Esau. Amen? Amen. Remember, Isaac is the father. And so because she favored Jacob, she went and told Jacob, my son, listen to me. I need you to take this savory meat to your father that I'm going to prepare. Now I want you to listen to this video carefully. 
We can study this, but never get the full manifestation because there are times that God will reveal a, deep, a deeper part of the scripture. She knew if he went out and killed two goats, how to make that meat taste like venison. So her plot and her scheme was not of her. God had it going that way all the time. You'll get it in a minute. See, you got to understand that God is so wise that he don't make a mistake. How can you make goat taste like venison unless you had a key position on knowing how to do preparation? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, God has preparated me for something. This is part of the week. We, we just stepped into a new endurance of something that we're going to be working on. And uh, if anybody would have told me we were going to do this and this and this, I would never. I didn't see this coming. You understand? Tell your neighbor, I'm going to get some stuff that I never saw it coming. I just believe that there are some folks in here that God has placed a, 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 an anointing in your life, but you have not discovered it yet. And I just know when I lay my hands this moment that some new ideas gonna pop. Now, now if you ain't get that, I'm fine with it. Cause if you don't get yours, I still got enough time to work mine and yours. Hello, hello. Cause see, let me tell you something. I remember sitting in church, and I remember God telling a particular person. Say, I need you to evangelize and I need you to minister. And, and that person looked off in, in space because they didn't want to do it. But I happened to be in the service when God made the offer. And I said, God, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Amen. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't sing like she can and definitely can't preach like she can. But if you anoint me, I'll take it. Amen. And I remember several days I started getting these phone calls. Sister Estelle, will you come minister at my church? Sister Estelle, will you come minister at my church? So I went to my pastor and I said, uh, I'm getting these calls about ministry and I don't want to do it without your permission because I know you're my pastor and I'm supposed to get my instructions from you. She said, you lifted your hand when God gave it to somebody else. She said, he took it from her and gave it to you. She said, but let me help you. Not only do what he took from her, he's given to you. Say, but every blessing that went with it, it's going to go with you. Hallelujah. So see, I, I, I say it again. If you don't want it, All right, we'll get it. What I like about studying this, Mr. Porter, and I'm ahead of him, I'll come back. But God, after Jacob got blessed by the land on his hands, God said to Jacob, what I was to Abraham, what I was to Isaac, I will be for you. So I got to know this morning that the multiplication of the blessings of God is going to increase in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. See, because God wants to be everything that you need him to be. And all you need is a submissive spirit. And when you submit yourself, you give God the authority to be for you. All right, okay, so let me get to the scripture. Starting at the sixth verse. And I'm almost through. And Rebecca spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard that father speaking to Esau, the brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord, before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to which that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats. 
and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loved. Now that's not what he asked for, he asked for venison. Mm -hmm. So I gotta know that there is a taste between venison and goat. But she knew how to season it that the father would not know. Now Jacob means trickery, trickster. It means that he a poor trickster. Hallelujah. And so he was named that by his mom, not knowing that that would be a strong position in his life. Because he's getting ready to pull one of the greatest tricks of his life. That will detour a blessing from Esau, but it would happen to him. Hallelujah. Now I don't know who blessings we're going to steal this morning. And really, it don't care. I just know that today is the day to anoint you for a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Mr. Porter, uh, 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 I'm going to tell about Mr. Porter a minute because I like to tell about being human, you know, people you sit among. Yeah. Porter came to church one Sunday and Porter got called out. God said, Porter, said less than a year. I'm going to make you a million. Yeah. <coughs> and gave him some warnings. Isn't it funny we hear everything but we won't hear the warnings? Mm -hmm. Gave him some warnings. He don't mind me telling him. Because he's in a repeated situation that God is getting ready to do again what he did before. Amen. Hallelujah. But there's no wisdom there now. No understanding there now. And so it won't go the way it went. I went there. Amen. And less than a year, God took him what he said. Was his faith there? Yeah, at that time. But the greatest part of him, his position was there. Mm -hmm. What do you mean when you say position? He set himself in a position to be blessed. Pastor Johnny walked across the floor this morning and she quoted a lot of my scriptures, a lot of them. What we fail to understand that when God is working in our life, we've got to stay firm with what the word of God is saying. Though the enemy comes out against me, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will take up the sand. Though a thousand come at my right side, 10,000 at my left, but none shall move me. Amen. For he gave his angels charge over me Amen. to keep me in all my ways. So that means as a child of God, if I live right, walk up right before him, he has assigned angels to me to protect me, shield me, and take me to that place where he has called me to be. Amen. I don't know about you, but I follow hard after the word of God. Because in the word of God, I find help, I find strength, I find deliverance, I find the power of God manifested in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and thank God for his word. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man and I'm a smooth man. My father pre-adventure will fill me and I shall seem to him as a deceiver and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebecca took godly raiment of her, her goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which was with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And that funny, Esau was standing around and didn't know what was going on. Mm. Y'all get this? Yeah. So that means I can be in the midst of the people and they're paying attention but they don't even know what's going on. Let me just help you. It does not matter what's going on in your life. 
If you stay connected with God and follow the instructions of God, he got to work for you. He ain't got no choice, y'all. God has to work for you. And when he do what he do, he do it so smoothly to even a fool can't help because you're trusting the one and true and only God. And she put the scales of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came into his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou biddest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that my soul may bless that that thy soul may bless me. And I just said to his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Getting good, eh? <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. This is some of the most beautiful stories in the Word of God. And I just said to Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went to Isaac his father. And he felt him, he said, the voice of Jacob voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Mm -hmm. This guy, he's getting ready to be judged by the feeling of the hand. Thank you, Jesus. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau had. So he blessed him. Now I want you to circle this blessing in your Bible, right on the side, blessed by God. And he said, bring it near to me, and I will eat my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and he kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and he blessed him and said, see, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Now, he's getting ready to speak blessings in his life. I want y'all to listen. I want you to serve with us. Therefore, God giveth thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be loyal over thy brethren, and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Watch this. Curse be everyone that curse thee, and bless be he that blesses thee. Y'all get this? Amen. Now you circle that, write your name out there. That's a covenant between God and his children. What I need you to do is to read this scripture for the next 40 days. Preferably twice a day, three times more her. 40 days will change your atmosphere. I need you to become convinced that God has blessed you. Amen. See, you can hear me this morning and walk right out the door and some stupid thing happen and you'll say, that's why I don't nothing ever good happen for me. So you will eradicate everything that I've said to you and so you make it impossible for the presence of God to dominate your atmosphere. Amen. But if you have to keep the scripture before your face and consistently read the scripture, What's going to happen is going to change your way of thinking. Amen. And you're going to start appropriating within yourself the ability of how God can and will bless you and bless everything you touch. I believe when I show up, everything good that happens. Amen. Amen. I really don't care how it's called. I don't care who fussing or even who cussing. I believe if I just stand there and whisper a little prayer under my breath, I'm quiet, they ain't gonna drop. They gonna fall in line. I believe that. Amen. I believe that the favor of God is on my life. And I believe that wherever I thread my feet to wherever place I take it to, if it's a bad situation when I show up, it's gonna change good. It don't matter if y'all don't believe that. Amen. But I will tell you it's working. Amen. I can go to my doctor's office and everybody gonna run 
You have to read the rest of the story to understand and see the manifestation of what he went through. But now, the key to this is everything he went through, God brought him out of. Every time the enemy rose against him, God rose against the enemy. So I'm not here to tell you you ain't going to have no situation. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to win through them all. You're going to win through them all. Not just to my little children, but to my big children. You're going to win. Test is coming. Temptation's coming. Trials coming. But you're going to win through them all. Amen? Amen. I don't care how bad it looks. And let me tell you, some of y'all got to, you got to graduate. You can't be in church all your life and still be trying to figure stuff out. It don't matter what attacks come over your life. Throw your hands up and give God some glory. I'm going to say it again. It does not matter what attacks come in your life, but when they Go get back in the bed and cover my head up and just stick my toe up and see if it was set. That's what the attack called for. Mm -hmm. But that's not how I respond. Mm -hmm. I did not respond based on the attack. We responded like it had never happened. When we got to a place to get some information, I had lost my whole day. Laying in the bed, coming, oh me, oh my. I'm too old for oh me, oh my. I gotta throw up my hand against all opposition and call on the name of the Lord because He's my protector, He's my shielder, He's my deliverer, and there's nothing that God cannot do. And until you get that, you better act like you're on your way. I need 10 people to throw up your hand.
Moses. I got a scripture that says in the book of Matthew that not one tilt of God will hurt but four more. Yeah. Her grades 
because I'm bearing a foundation when I get ready to lay hands. I told Barry, quit your job. Didn't take it. And take the other job. Didn't take it. Didn't take it. I know I did. Barry come back and tell me he ain't gonna do it. Eh, I ain't lying on you, Emma. Uh-huh. Smile, you smile. <laughs> The Holy Ghost pushed her. See, some of y'all need a push. Amen. How you do you tell God, I miss you so that I won't miss you. Go and do what you gotta do in my life. So Barry, Mr. Corner, went on, took the job, and had a lot of excuses. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have to call me by my children. And I won't be able to get there to see about my children. He said, Behold, I give you power. Oh, my God. Over all the works of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt or harm you. So all you had to do was bind up the element and tell the devil, My children won't be sick. My children won't have a problem. You know, man, God, he got to take care of the rest. All right. So very dumb over the Lake City, he takes the job. Amen. A couple weeks ago, where he was, they cut everybody's salary down. Amen. They cut everybody's hours down. Amen. And one of the guys tipped the bear and said, Barry, if you've been there, they'll fire you. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. F-I-R-E-D. Amen. All right. Fire. Uh-huh. Tell the truth, Amen. But the new job. That God prophesied. That God said, Now you're going to get your own day. Tell the truth, Barry. They didn't get ready to give him his own place. Tell the truth, Barry. The key to all of this is it didn't look like what it is now. Watch the ocean, it would help her break into her fans. And 
he had married this other woman. And so the sister said to my pastor, I'm going to pay for you to go over there. And so mother went to Miami Beach for about five or six days. And she was fast. And so when she came home, she finished the 21 days and nights in her room. She lost about 40 pounds. But there was a fire in the house that we had never seen before. And so she said to the sister, she said, your husband is coming home. She said, I saw a little tan, cow pants, and a beige shirt coming up the walkway of my house. She said, when he came, you were living in my house. But the lady had her own apartment. She wasn't living with us. She didn't have to. I'm telling you this because everything happened bad don't mean it's bad because they have a reason to happen. So she lost the job, lost her apartment, and she moved in with, with us. True story. True story. <coughs> Mother would be in the room and look out her window because she hears somebody. And here comes the man with the tan pants, the beige shirt, coming for his wife. He had told the woman he was married to in Louisiana, he said, this ain't gonna work, I want my wife back. Some of y'all looking at this screen. <laughs> true story. For no true story. He comes to the door, he comes You. Have you changed? Mother told him, say, if you don't change, he ain't gonna stay. He wanted his wife. Who y'all looking at me like crazy? I'm trying to show you the perplexity of activity in your life. Do not stop God from blessing you. The authority of God can show up in any situation. So she go out with They see each other a couple of times. Mother say, son, son, keep mom shut. Because he expected a change. She don't change. She don't change. She busting it, she hollering. She don't change. Now, I feel like I'm talking to somebody in church. Today. Don't change. <clears throat> so he tells her, you don't change and he keep walking. Everything she desired, she got it. But she wasn't apt to change. I always say, it ain't hard to miss God. It's easy to miss God. Because it's something you got to do to keep you in a place where God manifests himself. Do I have your attention? Yeah. Yeah. That same sister wore glasses that magnify more than five times greater. She would be in on the seal's prayer line. The mother would lay hands on her. And her eyes would become perfect. Perfection came into her eyes. She was a great Bible teacher. I say this, and I say it with a sincerity of my heart. I study the Bible to teach you anything. I study the Bible to live by and to teach you how to live by. Yeah. We can't study the Bible so we can debate on what scripture I know more than you know. Right. But you study the word of God that you can place yourself in a position to make right decisions. The same sister had no place to stay because she kept repeating activity in her life. Her greatest problem was her mouth. 
So the sisters got together, the mama died. They gave her the house, all free and clear. Same sister. But she did not put herself in a position to change. I like that word, to change. Tell your neighbor, changing is the key. Changing is the key. Changing is the key. Changing is the key. She'll lose the house, lose the car, and her blindness came back. She's at a place in her life now where people have to leave her alone. Should not have went that way. But it went that way because nobody could prompt her to change. I hope you love me for what I'm finna say, but I hope where you at now teaches you how to respond to God. A real Christian cannot respond to how people think it ought to be. If you call me and say, Pastor, the Lord is speaking to me to tell you something. <coughs> Make something simple to me. And you say, God said, tell you, don't go to church Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to do you a favor. I'm sleeping that night. <laughs> I'm bringing all my stuff, makeup and all, and I'm going to sleep there. Because if he told you to tell me, don't come to church Sunday morning, I ain't finna to take what you say. So, pre adventure, you just heard, I'll be church when you get there. Yeah, yeah. 